I would like to uh, uh, thank you for uh, uh, inviting me for this conference and uh, And I would like also uh, uh, thank Bishop Mai for the invitation and uh, also to meet with the old colleagues since long time. Okay. So uh, my task today is to talk about uh, the first, light, uh, first line immunotherapy in upper GI cancers and we'll focus on uh, the gastric and gastroesophageal cancers. This is my disclosures. And as you know, uh, there are three entities in uh, gastric gastrointestinal uh, cancer, uh, the esophageal, the GE junction, and the gastric. Uh, for the histology, as you know, the uh, esophageal, mainly uh, the squamous cell carcinoma representing 85% to 90%, and the rest uh, will be the adenocarcinoma and most of the uh, cases of esophageal, usually in the estrin population, uh, with 90% uh, 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 in the estrin population. And the common uh, site of uh, the uh, adenocarcinoma in the esophageal, usually in the western population. GE junction, the majority are adenocarcinoma, as you know, and there is a trend to move from uh, squamous over the uh, last three decades to the adenocarcinoma in the uh, 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 GE junction tumor. And as you know, in the uh, gastric uh, cancer, most of the cases uh, are adenocarcinoma, more than 90%. And also, there is a decrease in the non cardiac cancer worldwide. Uh, for gastric, if we talk about gastric, it is the fifth most common uh, worldwide and the fourth leading cause of death with uh, a lot of morbid morbidity and mortality. And as we said, uh, there is a trend for the non-cardiac uh, to uh, decline while the rate of uh, the cardiac and GE junction are uh, increasing. And this is the recent data uh, from US, as you can see in the SEER data. And you can see that there is a decrease uh, in the incidence and mortality in gastric cancer. And still we have uh, one third of the cases uh, uh, surviving uh, five years and more. Uh, this is our data based, uh, published previously from our group, based on around 42,000 cases. Uh, first, we have the true answer from 2003 to 2008. Then we have estimation to 2018. And you can see that there is significant increase in the uh, in the number of cases with significant p-value either in the esophagus or stomach, and males predominate rather than the female, as you can see here, uh, with the, uh, the absolute percent change showing a significant increase. Also, the risk factor, if we can talk about it, based on the, uh, the site of the uh, cancer, uh, it varies from the diet, alcohol, tobacco, obesity, H. pylori, and uh, the gastroesophageal reflux disease. Uh, also, there is some uh, uh, hereditary factors that we look for, the hereditary uh, diffuse gastric cancer syndrome, the Lynch syndrome, uh, juvenile polyposis uh, 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 syndrome. We have the hereditary breast and ovarian, and we are seeing cases with uh, BRCA positive uh, running in the families and the other layer, uh, also genetic predisposition. Also, this data from our group aiming to study the, uh, the PAF, what we call the percentage attributable factor, and the risk of developing uh, cancer in the future. We use it for all types of cancers, but this part for gastric cancer, and you can see, and uh, gastroesophageal cancer, you can see that in gastric cancer, 50% of the cases related to H. pylori, either in males or females. So if you prevent H. pylori, you can prevent a lot of gastric cancer. The rest are due to smoking and the non-adherence to low Mediterranean diet, which represent a low percentage, less than 10%. And the gastroesophageal and esophageal, the main factor is BMI. So patient with BMI 
more than 25, this is the main factor in this type of obesity and BMI play, playing a, a risk factor in around 40% in uh, uh, GE junction and osophageal. So it is important to know these risk factors in certain type of cancer and work on prevention. Uh, this is the histologic and molecular subclassification. As you know from the molecular subclass uh, subclassification in gastric cancer, we have four uh, subgroups, the chromosomal instability and the, uh, 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 the other subtypes, including the Epstein-Barr virus, which are uh, representing usually in the range of 14% of the cases, and usually these are responsive to immunotherapy, and also they have high expression of PDL1, uh, these type of cancers. And we have the MSI high patients, which varies from five to seven percent. So at least we have 20 percent of the cases of gastric cancer was a very responsive to immunotherapy, and this is very important, irrespective of the uh, uh, PDL1 or expression or others. The histologic subtypes, uh, you know, uh, we talked about the esophageal cancer, most of the GE junction and the gastric are adenotoxinomas, as you know. It is important to uh, localize the GE junction because sometimes we have a difference in the uh, management. So based on the, uh, the epicenter of the tumor and the uh, gastroenterologist is better than us to del delineate this type. So uh, including whether it is uh, up to five centimeter or below to two centimeter, what they call steward one and two, these are what the really uh, uh, GE junction tumor and they can fit, uh, fit to the uh, 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 protocols for G, uh, GE junction tumors. Other than that, we consider about that is the esophageal and below that is the uh, uh, gastric cancer. Uh, what are the biomarkers that are important before starting any treatment? These are the mandatory biomarkers, the first group, the HER2 amplification, which can be used by immunohistochemistry or the ish, dish or fish, or the uh, MSI high tumors, either doing uh, by immunohistochemistry or BCR or NGS, and the PDL1 expression. These are mandatory for every uh, gastric tumor, even the early cases we do it. Uh, the others are, uh, you can do it according to availability because we don't have all these types, the NTRAC fusion, TMB, and the comprehensive genomic profiling. And usually, as we said, we should do it uh, from the start. This is the NGS panels that we can use adding to what we call the Claudine 18, because now we have a target, a drug that can uh, target this uh, Claudine 18, and this data presented recently in GU ASCO, and it is a positive trial, phase three trial, and can be done by immunohistochemistry uh, test. And the other is the epidermal growth factor receptors, either uh, uh, mutation or amplification and did not amplification. Uh, this is what we know about the management of gastric and gastroesophageal junctions, whether they have a HER2 expression or no expression. Uh, based on that, we uh, designed the treatment, and this is uh, well known from previous published data, the combination of chemotherapy plus immunotherapy in gastric based on the uh, uh, checkmate uh, 649 and in GE junction esophageal based on uh, 648. Uh, and we have also the approval of uh, combination of uh, combination chemotherapy with Bambro uh, CPS equal more than uh, 10 in esophageal carcinoma based on Kino uh, 590. Adding anti-HER2 is well known to us as oncologists based on TOGA trial, and recently adding immuno to this combination based on the Keynote 8111, uh, which based on response rate only. We don't have a survival data till now. I will present now the update that presented GU, uh, uh, GI ASCO 2000, uh, uh, 2023 for the checkmate uh, 649. 
Uh, this, uh, as we said, and follow up on uh, over a year, we have the data on sex, uh, the checkmate 649, adding pembrol uh, adding nivolumab to chemotherapy will improve the outcome as survival, either for the intention to treat population or a patient with PDL1 equal more than 5%. This is known to us, and now we have the three years follow-up of this. This is the design of the trial based on uh, combination chemotherapy, either Torfoxylox with nivolumab or chemotherapy alone, or the combination of nivolumab. Uh, the uh, primary uh, endpoint of the study is a dual uh, primary endpoint, which is overall survival and progression-free survival in PDL1 patient with CPS equal more than five. Secondary endpoint include the other sub, uh, uh, subgroups and overall response rate with the safety profile and quality. Stratification including tumor based on PDL1 and the region, whether it be Asia or the United States and rest of the world, and ECOG performance and the type of chemotherapy. The study is well balanced between the two R's, specifically for those with PDL1 CPS equal more than five, as you can see here. And the primary endpoint as overall survival, you can see, is significantly improved overall survival in patients with PDL1 CPS equal more than uh, uh, five, from 11.1 to 14.4 months with a HADA ratio 0.70 and significant T value. Also, it is possible for intention to treat po population. The progression-free survival at 36 months also significantly improvement from 6.5 to 8.3 months with a other ratio 0.70 and significant uh, p-value. So it is beneficial for those category of patients. You can see that uh, the uh, benefit on this category of patient across all subgroups irrespective of the uh, age six, the ECOG performance, the prime tumor location, whether they have uh, liver or other sites of metastasis, and uh, with PDL1 expression, exp uh, specifically in those categories with uh, 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 equal or more than 5%. And uh, we'll talk about the MSI stage and respective of chemotherapy regimen. In the subgroups analysis, uh, you can see that uh, uh, the benefit is continuous when PDL1 is increasing from equal more than one to equal more than five. But above that, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, efficacy or the outcome equal the same. So this is the cutoff Y uh, equal more than five. Uh, in the contrary with other studies like in Pembrolizumab, we have to take a cutoff of uh, equal more than 10 based on the survival data. And the overall response, it did not follow the same. So it is equal across all. It did not follow the PDL1. This is uh, an important observation. This is the data for MSI versus MSS patient. And you can see the difference between MSI and MSS patients. So significant improvement from 12.3 months to 38, almost 39 months and a uh, had a ratio 0 0.34 and very significant p-value. So a significant improvement compared to MSS patients. For progression-free survival too, this is an important, if you give the patient second line, then what is the uh, progression-free survival after second line? Also, it did show that patients who received NIVO plus chemotherapy up from the first line, they benefit more for page for the second uh, survival progression free survival as you can see here from 9.8 to 13.7 months with the other ratio 0 0.67 again a specific category which is uh, uh, cps equal more than 5 and also for uh, response duration you can see here the response in the range uh, improved from around 45 to 60% in the combination arm with CPS equal more than five. So it is significant, but the duration also uh, varies. If the chemotherapy only, it improved from seven to uh, the combination chemo plus nivo to 9.6 months. And this is important also to have an extension of response, delaying recurrence of these patients 
and subsequently improve the outcome and the quality of life of these patients. <coughs> Treatment-related toxicity for chemo combination versus the uh, chemo arm, uh, usually we did not see any difference. As you can see here, specifically in neutropenia, uh, leukopenia, anemia, and uh, increasing in lipase, uh, minimal difference between the two arms. So we did not expect to have a difference in outcome. And for the immune-related uh, reaction, specifically the uh, grade three and four, Percent we expected with uh, single agent immunotherapy to have it less than five percent, and this is what we have in this study. So it did not have a, 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 a side effect or adverse event that unusual from what we have. Also, you can see that the adverse event mainly in the first six months. After six months, it decreases markedly this uh, adverse events, and this is what we expected. And the summary for the, uh, the uh, author that after three years of follow-up in this study, uh, still the combination of chemotherapy plus nivolumab showed significant improvement in outcome, including the uh, survival maintained and also the progression-free survival, response rate, and the duration of response across all subgroups, specifically those groups with uh, uh, CPS equal more than five. And what is we have here extra in this trial is adding favorable progression-free survival to which is uh, improved when the patient received the combination chemoimmunotherapy. No uh, additive adverse event that we expected from the combination. We know these, and these data support the use of the combination in the first line in gastric gastroesophageal junction and uh, esophageal adenocarcinoma. So what is the difference between trials? And this is also presented in the discussion during the G, uh, GI ASCO uh, 2023. You can see uh, on the right, on the left-hand side here, the checkmate uh, 649 uh, as we uh, presented, and specifically in patients with CPS equal more than one. And you can see there is significant improvement in outcome of survival from 11.3 to uh, 14 months, and also in progression-free survival. But if you take the CPS uh, uh, less than one, uh, you can see here that uh, CPS, the other ratio is not significant. So we're talking about this CPS equal or more than one. On the other hand, if you take the keynote 062, which try to answer what is the value of combination PEMBRO with chemo in the same category of patients. And if you take the CPS equal more than one, there is no difference. So no additive effect of the combination pembrolizumab plus chemo versus chemotherapy. And you can see the other ratio is 0 0.84. So you cannot apply the same uh, rule for other immunotherapy. This is important. You have to take it from that. And even the PEMBRO versus chemo in this uh, showed no difference. The other ratio crossing one, as you can see here. So there is no difference between the. So you cannot apply the same rule for the same concept using chemo plus immuno to all types of immunotherapy, although the chemotherapy here is the same. On the other hand, if you take the favorable groups in both studies, the favorable group in Checkmate 649 is patient CPS equal more than five. And you can see significant improvement in survival also, uh, well known here. And the uh, progression-free survival also significantly improved. Overall response rate is better from 45 to 60 in the combination, but less than five CPS, the overall survival is not significant. On the other hand, the Keynote 062 using the same concept, but we are taking CPS more equal than 10. As you can see here, for the combination chemo plus PEMBRO versus chemo, you can see no significant. 
the other ratio did uh, uh, showed zero, uh, did not improve in, in the survival, as we see in the other curve. The other ratio was uh, 0 0.85, p-value was not significant, 0 0.16. There is some improvement in progression-free survival, no improvement in response rate. But if you compare single-agent PAMBRO versus chemo, although we are seeing here a, a wider of the curve, but you can see that the overall response is inferior for PAMBRO single agent 25 versus chemo 38. Progression free survival, crossing one, not significant. And this widening of the curve did not translate into survival. So this is a very important uh, observation. This is the ASCO guidelines, which speaks for the approval of the drug for the first line with the combination for patient CPS equal more than five. For patient for, uh, CPS uh, more than one equal one to five, we have to discuss it with the patient. It's not applied to all patients. And patient with CPS zero, it is not uh, indicated. These are the, uh, the uh, phase three randomized trials for the, uh, all the combination first line with chemo plus immunotherapy in different uh, categories. And all these failed except the checkmate, 649, and on the, uh, at the uh, uh, east side, Asian Japan, we have two important trials, the rational 305 and the Orient 16. These are positive trials using different type of uh, immunotherapy as you can see here. What about the patient with uh, HER2 plus 3? As we said, uh, based on Keynote uh, 811, uh, we have FDA approval for based on response rate only. We don't have a survival. It is approved by FDA. We are waiting the survival, improving the response rate if you add uh, the pembrolizumab to uh, uh, chemo plus uh, trastuzumab. Uh, as you can see from almost 52 to 75 percent with significant p-value. And this had an accelerated approval uh, last year. This is the guideline. We have the NCCN guidelines. We have the ESMO guidelines and all speaks for the combination of chemo plus nivolumab with uh, patient uh, have uh, CPS equal more than five in the uh, patient with uh, HER2 negative, and in HER2 positive, even the ESMO guide did not include till now the, uh, the pembrolizumab. Moving to the esophageal cancer, uh, as you know, it is uh, highest in the incidence in the uh, Eastern population. The uh, Western population have a less, less than uh, 15, 10 to 15 percent and higher in males than uh, females, and this is the sixth most cause of cancer-related uh, death. The risk factor is somewhat different. It has a, uh, whether talk about behavior like tobacco and alcohol consumptions, host environment, mainly uh, those with uh, obesity, Barrett esophagus, reflux, and those who have received radiation therapy, history of head and neck cancer also, also uh, geographically, mostly uh, uh, in the, uh, as we said, in the Eastern population, in, in the uh, more, China, Hong Kong, Japan, Singapore, as you can see here. Uh, and uh, incidence rate globally uh, for the squamous, it is declining, for the adeno, it is rising. Uh, this is the, what we know about the standard of treatment in the, uh, in the treatment of uh, esophageal, uh, specifically if we talk about squamous cell carcinoma, uh, the combination of chemo radiation is very important. The second line, uh, we have the patient with PD, uh, CPS equal more than 10, the uh, approval of uh, pembrolizumab, uh, while in on the other uh, side, if the patient has adenocarcinoma, so we have the approval of uh, 
the combination of chemotherapy plus nivolumab. Uh, this is the PDL1 expression in patients with the esophageal cancer. <coughs> As you can see here in the squamous cell carcinoma, based on five uh, keynote uh, 590 uh, with TTS equal more than 10, we have a, a significant improvement uh, with adding Penbro plus chemo versus the uh, placebo plus chemo with the other ratio 0.59. And as you can see, uh, the overall survival significantly improved and also the uh, progression-free survival. There are other drugs that based on the uh, chemotherapy like attraction four with uh, based on nivolumab and also the Jupiter uh, 06, which in the Western population, uh, the Eastern population uh, based on uh, uh, another immunotherapy. Uh, uh, that called the uh, tori palimumab. We have the update of this study, the Checkmate uh, 648, and in this study we know that 75% of the uh, patients were squamous cell carcinoma and the rest were adenocarcinoma, and the, uh, this is based on previous data that presented and has follow-up, almost uh, one year follow-up, and showed that the combination of nivo plus chemo versus and nivo plus epilumab versus chemotherapy improved the survival in patients with uh, squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus and gastroesophageal junction. And now we have the uh, three years follow up, and this is a global uh, open label phase three trial randomized, more than 900 patients randomized to <coughs> nivolumab plus chemotherapy and the chemo is, uh, we know, platinum plus chloropyrimidine versus the combination of immunotherapy, nivo plus ipilumab versus chemotherapy uh, as third line, which is standard of care. The primary endpoint uh, end is du uh, uh, durable, is overall survival, progression free survival, specifically for patients with PDL1 equal uh, more than one. And the secondary endpoint include the overall survival, progression-free survival for all randomized patients, and overall response rate for tumor cells with PDL1 equal more than one and all randomized patients. You can see that the two uh, arms are uh, uh, well balanced, specifically for patients with PDL1 equal more than one, and uh, uh, the exposure and disposition over 29 months follow-up. You can see that. 59 of uh, patients receive subsequent treatment, which is a very, a very big number, uh, specifically, predominantly, uh, those uh, uh, who received the uh, NIVO chemo or those who need the NIVO epi, uh, the numbers are quite good. The primary endpoint, as after uh, almost 29 months follow-up, for patients in subgroup, uh, the uh, primary endpoint for PDL1 with equal more than one, you can see improved from 9.1 to 15 months with a other ratio of 0 0.59. And this is an important issue compared to the all groups, as you can see. So you can see that patient with uh, tumor uh, expressing PDL1 equal more than one had 41 reduction risk of this and almost uh, six months improvement in survival. And for compared to all randomized patients with high PDL1, low PDL1, uh, that showed 22 reduction risk of deaths and improvement only uh, two months. And this is the other ratio you can see in favor of all subgroups, chemo plus nemo versus chemotherapy, specifically those with PDL1 equal more than one uh, in all uh, subgroups of patients. And also, uh, overall survival by PDL1 status, the same as we expressed before, it is more with increasing PDL1 and uh, uh, PDL1 CPS equal uh, more than one showed the same outcome uh, in this category of patient. Here, we, we are not seeing increasing in outcome with increasing PDL1 like we, we saw in the uh, Checkmate 6409 in adenocarcinoma. We're not seeing this advantage. So it is almost the same for all groups expressing PDL1 equal more than one. 
The progression-free survival also improved in this category of patient, 4.4 to 6.8 months, and had a ratio 0.67 compared to the uh, intention to treat population, as you can see here. And also the uh, response rate improved from 20 to 53 percent, and the duration of response improved from 13 to 22 percent, uh, 22 month uh, percent. Uh, compared to the uh, or randomized patients. For the subgroup using only immunotherapy, if the patient cannot tolerate chemotherapy, uh, 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 for epinevo versus chemotherapy only, also you can see the patient uh, has an improvement in uh, survival, overall survival with PDL1 equal more than one from nine to 13 months. And this stable for all patients with PDL1 equal more than one. And you can see compared to the intention to treat population, there is 38 reduction versus 23 reduction. And also the duration almost double from two to four months as improvement in uh, survival. These are the subgroup analysis. As you can see, it is almost uh, in favor of all subgroups which are expressing uh, PDL1 equal more than one. For the nevo epi also uh, uh, overall survival based on PDL1 status, we are seeing the same effect. There is uh, uh, the same uh, effect of the overall survival improvement with PDL1 equal more than one, but no further increase with increasing PDL1. Uh, this is the progression free survival. I, again, with the use of uh, combination nevo epi versus chemotherapy at 29 months, there is uh, no improvement in progression-free survival. And we always see this patient, this uh, uh, effect, when we are using only immunotherapy versus chemo, the improvement in progression-free survival. We are not seeing this, but the outcome as survival, we are seeing the survival. This is an important observation. The uh, also, the overall response with epinevo versus chemo improved from 20 to 35 percent, equivalent to the chemo plus nevo, and also uh, the duration of response improved here markedly from 13 percent to 36 uh, months uh, uh, after chemo. The adverse events, we are seeing uh, <coughs> the effect uh, that expected from the chemotherapy in the chemotherapy group. Uh, for nevo chemo, we are seeing the effect of chemotherapy mostly as nausea, decreased appetite, stomatitis. Nevo epi, we are seeing more the effect of immunotherapy only because no chemotherapy in this group, the rash, pruritus, and hypothyroidism. And these are the expected. So we are not seeing unexpected adverse event in these groups. Even in uh, grade three and four, uh, we are not seeing unexpected. Uh, you can see it, it is less than 6% for all uh, patients. And the conclusion after three months follow up, still the combination of nevo chemo and nevo epi in patients with squamous cell carcinoma and esophageal and gastroesophageal uh, junction showed the same improvement in the uh, outcome as uh, survival overall response rate and duration of response, and uh, the no additive safety and a s signal that can be added to what we know about the combination or uh, the chemotherapy arm. And these uh, results support the use of the combination nevo chemo or if the patient cannot tolerate chemotherapy, nevo epilumab for the first line uh, for this category of patients. Uh, this is just a landmark for the future. I want to share it with you based on uh, what we have as new molecules. Specifically, now we have the Claudine 18, one of the uh, targeted, and it is uh, approved and uh, presented as uh, in a phase three randomized trial showing significant improvement in the survival when we target these uh, molecules. We have uh, on the uh, uh, way, we have the MET, the tropo 2 and uh, novel uh, immunotherapeutic drug. And usually we are going to categorize uh, these patients according to the uh, molecular subtypes. 
and also these are the guidelines, the NCCN and the ESMO guidelines which uh, confirm this combination. Thank you, I would like to thank all the group for listening and I'm ready for any questions. Thank you, Dr. Ali.